Uzbek pilav or plow or osh or however you want to call this deliciousness, it doesn't matter. It is simply amazing. I'm not the biggest fan of plain rice. I always like something in it, even if it is matched with my meh veggie peas. It just makes it better for me. So imagine me when our Uzbek neighbors, to be precise, Auntie Sajide, served me this for the first time. I was baffled and I can't help but share this with you. Auntie Sajide didn't quite give exact measurements, so I didn't stick to any either. This will be a lot, so keep that in mind. So here's what I used. 750 gram rice, about a kilo of carrots, about a kilo of onions, probably half a kilo of meat of your choice. I got here beef, about two tablespoons of currants, Lots of olive oil, some salt, some black pepper, two whole pieces of garlic, and cumin seeds, not cumin powder. No, 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 no. Before we start anything, we cook the meat of our choice. As I got beef, it takes quite a bit to get it to the right consistency. I just cook it with some salt and let it in the water even when it is done. Then it is time to cut the onions into thin pieces. These suckers will give the rice, together with the carrots, a Swedish note and the final color we want to achieve. It looks like much, but considering we are making a lot, it is nothing unusual. And now the part that takes the longest, the carrots. Auntie Sajide insisted that these should never be grated, but cut into small carrot sticks. So get the biggest carrots you can get and cut them diagonally. Please be careful with your fingers while cutting. When we are done cutting the slices, cut them to the sticks we need. And do that with all the carrots. That takes a long time, but it's so worth it. Meanwhile, I let my rice soak in a bit of hot water with a dash of salt so that we'll get the right consistency. Let this rest for at least 20 minutes. Finally, we can start with the cooking. Add a generous amount of olive oil to the pot of your choice, the bigger the better, and add all those onions and roast them. When they get a lovely golden color, it is time to add the meat. I don't pour away the water, as I want to use it for the rice later on. Then you can add the carrots. And as you can see, we removed a handful of them as we thought it would be just a tad too much. So trust your eyes. If it seems too much, get some out. And now finally, we add some salt. This doesn't look like much, but the sea salt of my mom is extremely salty so a little suffices. Continue to cook until the carrots start to soften. If the currants look like they are much more than I have shown you before, I haven't showed you that you can, but don't have to, let them sit in a bit of water. When taking the water, they inflated quite a bit. This one is super important. Add a generous amount of cumin seeds and stir your ingredients. We checked how it looked like and we didn't quite see any. That's the reason why we added a tad more. And what would be a pilau without any rice? Rice is pilau, so that is a weird sentence, but you get what I mean. As the amount of the rice equals three big cubs, we add exactly that much to our dish. I used the water that I cooked the meat in so as not to waste the water and the nutrients within. Clean the garlic from its outer shell, cut off the roots and place them deeply in the rice. Now poke in with a long stick or wooden spoon holes. Place a plate onto the rice to prevent it from rising and let this boil on low heat for at least 20 minutes. And that's it! When the time's up, you mix it thoroughly and remove the garlics within. 
And yeah, you can dig in. I really would have liked to know what Auntie Sajide would have said to this, but sadly we have moved a long time ago and we kind of lost contact. Nevertheless, I can tell you that this tastes amazing. And a note to those who aren't into meat. Of course you can skip it. It is just as yummy and it would be considered even vegan if you skip the beef broth as well. As usual, the recipe is in the description below with all the information you need. If you got a question, please write it in the comments and I'll answer you as soon as I can. If you like this recipe, you might like these videos here as well. If you want to support us, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you don't want to miss our weekly videos. Thank you for watching and see you next week.